Welcome back to the Student Achievement Show. I'm Paula Harris, your hostess. There's a saying that travel and change of place imparts a new vigor to the mind. Some of our HISD students have come back from their rural travels invigorated and with different perspectives. Joining me today to talk about their travels are the principal from the Houston Academy for International Studies, Melissa Jacobs, and four of her students. Joining us is Sierra Woods, a junior who traveled to debate in Slovenia, along with Benjamin Brooks, a senior who traveled to Cambodia, and I also would like you to meet Cindy Aranjo, who experienced life in a kibbutz in Israel, and finally, Jose Cantu, who trekked through Costa Rica's tropical forests. Okay, Ms. Jacobs, tell us about this Houston Academy for International Studies and how do you prepare the students for these global experiences? The Houston Academy for International Studies is two things. It's both an early college high school where our, stu our students study at the HCC Community College mm -hmm. and can earn up to an associate's degree while they're still in high school. It's also an international studies school in the Asia Society's International Studies Schools Network. And as an international studies school, what we do is we, um, we have international parts of our curriculum. For instance, all of these students have taken Model United Nations for an entire year, oh. and we have courses such as Global Business, as well as we in, we interweave themes of international studies throughout our regular curriculum. Okay. So these students are well prepared by the time they get. So you've had a couple classes on globalism <laughs> before you head out. So, Sierra, you participated in the Rural Schools Debate Academy mm -hmm. in Slovenia. Slovenia. Yeah. I understand you were debating against kids from Venezuela, from Germany, from mm -hmm. Croatia. What an experience. Tell us what you learned while debating internationally. So I had to debate in a new style of debate that I'm not used to. I'm a policy debater in Houston, mm -hmm. but when we went over to Slovenia, the debate academy is for parliamentary debate. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn a new style of debate and like you said, I had to debate against people from all around the world. And so something that I learned was that most people from other countries speak English, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever we would get our critiques or something like that, the first thing that the judges would say would be congratulating the other team on how good they were at speaking English mm -hmm. because they were debating in another language that they're not used to. So that was something that was really impressive for me, debating in Slovenia. We learned about different cultures and things like that, not only parliamentary debate. But it was, it was an awesome experience because I got to meet people from so many different countries and experience their cultures also. Exactly. And I heard you just popped over to Austria. Yeah. Tell us about your little soiree over to another place. <laughs> well, um, what's really cool about Europe and Slovenia is that everywhere is so close to each other. So since the train system works mm -hmm. so well, we just took a train over to Austria and we ended up going to a bunch of different places. Austria is where Mozart is from, mm -hmm. so we got to see where Mozart lived and where he studied. We got to see Freud's museum, and it was where he, um, it was his office where he interviewed people and things like mm -hmm. that, so that was a really great museum. As well as going to like the Austrian city museum or something oh, yes. like that, and they had all this beautiful art and things like that, so it was really interesting. Very good. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like you call your mom, I'm going to go to the gallery. Mom, I'm going to just head over to no, Austria definitely. for the day. <laughs> it was awesome. So, Benjamin, you, out of 300 candidates, you were, um, you were chosen to go to Cambodia this year. Yeah. Tell us about your Cambodian experience and the culture, and what did you do while you were there? It was completely different from America because usually you see a lot of cars driving everywhere, mm -hmm. especially in Houston, but most people either rode bicycles or like these little motorcycles that they call, like we call them like motos, mm -hmm. like they call it motos over there too. And they have little tuk-tuks riding around, so it's like a big carriage on a moto mm -hmm. that they drive around. The taxi system. Yeah, so like <laughs> the driving system was different and like the people were a lot more welcoming than in America. Like they were extremely nice to us, they welcomed us everywhere we went to. And the whole experience was there. Uh, well, the reason why we were there was to show like that they can develop sustainably. Because mm -hmm. like they have, um, they're like trying to recover from the Pol Pot regime, like mm -hmm. the whole historic um, part where many people were died, like killed because they weren't like farmers and everything. Mm -hmm. So when they try to like adjust back to regular society, they're growing and they're trying to make sure that they don't use the resources that they have in their country like um, um, bad, in a bad way. So make sure that they grow sustainably and get back to where they started. Now this isn't your first international trip. You were a pro this summer. <laughs> now, where did you go last summer, and how did you? What did you notice as the, some of the similarities and differences of your two summer experiences? Well, 
uh, I went to China last year, and mm -hmm. the similarity was that the welcoming people, like since we were from America, everybody wanted to welcome us and see what we did every like on a daily basis. <laughs> like they were so fascinated by us coming to their country. Uh, but the um, purpose of the China trip was different from Cambodia. It was mm -hmm. to learn Chinese, so mm -hmm. we spent most of our time in Beijing in one place. But we still learned a lot about the culture. We had cultural classes. We learned like kung fu. We learned how to paint in Chinese, wow. like the Chinese paint and calligraphy and all those historical things that China's known for. Excellent, excellent. And Cindy, you were part of the Mickey Leland Kibbutz internship, and you actually learned some Hebrew, spent some time with the Israeli family. Tell us about your experience. Okay, um, shalom. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Mickey Leland internship program, um, it was chose 10 students from the Houston area to travel to Israel for one, ma one month. It's an all paid trip. Um, first, uh, the basis of it was to get students to learn about the kibbutzim, which is like a socialist community. Um, we went to two kibbutzim, one in North Israel by the Sea of Galilee and one in South Israel in the desert. Uh, we lived there for three, four days. Uh, we saw how they live, their community, what they do. Um, we talked to the teenagers there and saw their points of view on it. Um, we stayed with three, as hosts for three Israeli families mm -hmm. in three cities, uh, in Haifa, uh, in Petak Tikva, and we stayed with a Jews village in Horfeish. And we saw the differences between uh, the Jews and the the Jewish families, mm -hmm. uh, the Jewish families are more uh, liberal, they let their kids go out more, and the Jews, they're really more conservative. Um, mm -hmm. Girls and guys can't touch each other at all, no hugs or anything. Uh, they don't let the girls go out at night, so it was a big difference from going to Haifa to uh, her face and just a big difference there. So you got to see the differences mm -hmm. right there. In right, in the girls. same country, good, yeah. Good, and, and not even the teenage girls and boys, they can't hold mm -hmm. hands? Wow, you'd have a tough time yeah. staying there. <laughs> That'd be tough on our teenagers. And Jose can too. Yes. Spent some time in Costa Rica this summer. Yes. Tell us about Costa Rica. I've heard it's beautiful. It, it truly is. It's amazing. The tropical rainforest, tropical cloud forest. They have the beautiful white sand beaches, even active volcanoes. We visited everything. Amazing scenery. Mm -hmm. So, we visited all these like ecological places to learn about ecological sustainability mm -hmm. and how to preserve the rainforest and the natural resources that we have sort of like Benny's Cambodia trip the Costa Rica is a very interesting country compared to the United States it preserves 30 percent of all its natural rainforest wow. which is 30 percent, excuse me, it's 30 percent of the country's land is natural rainforest which is completely preserved by the Costa Rican government. So they really, that, that's a very good lesson to be learned by the United States. Not a lot of tree burning going on over no, there. No, not at all. <laughs> completely illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how this has changed. I believe international travel changes who you are and how you think. Coming back as a U.S. student, back in an American school, even though it's the international school, how mm -hmm. has this changed you or your way of thinking or learning or interacting with others? Well, I would say that it's so different in other countries and you realize that people in other countries basically they like appreciate things more mm. than you would in everyday life in America because when I traveled to Egypt my freshman year I mean taking a shower was something that was like oh my gosh finally a shower <laughs> you know and you come to the US and it's like I can take a shower five times a day exactly. so it's it's really different coming back I appreciate my life way more than in other countries that I've been to and Benjamin? I have a similar shower experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like a bucket in cold water. Yeah. <laughs> but it taught me how to like humble myself because mm -hmm. a lot of people over there don't have the same opportunities as we have in America. And also I learned about the work ethic of other people in other countries because mm -hmm. in both of the trips I tr we volunteered at these schools where they're like migrant children, like children of migrant workers mm -hmm. and some kids who are like economically like you know, deprived mm -hmm. so they don't have as much opportunities as we do but they still like strive to work, work hard, hard so that inspired me so when I came back I should like want to work harder mm -hmm. like, so I can be able to be as hard working as they Perfect. are. Perfect. Any way it changed you? Um, yeah, actually after I came back from Israel I realized how many possibilities there are in life because um, 
over there, the teenagers, they're not like us, that all they want to do is go to high school and get a college diploma. Instead, because since all the Israelis are drafted into the army for mm -hmm. two or three years after they're 18, so they expect that. And after that, about 70% of them travel around the world before going to college. Mm -hmm. So it's just seeing all that there's so many more possibilities to do in life, as well as just seeing the Holy Land and you know, getting the impact of being a place where I had dreamed of going to for so many years. Anyway, your travels have changed you? Well, first of all, it really made me appreciate the education system that we have mm -hmm. in the United States and my education. So in Costa Rica, we, we, were, we visited a little school up in the mountains in a very rural community. Mm -hmm. The entire school held elementary and middle school kids and they all had class within one classroom. Wow. The entire school, uh, the entire school had 18 students and only one teacher who served as a principal, teacher, <laughs> lunch ladies, yeah. everything. So that was a really big contrast with the education that I've had now, and also a really big contrast with my summer experience because I also got to go to Indiana University this summer to study Chinese for three weeks. Wow. So just very big contrast really made me appreciate my education. So are you fluent in Chinese yet? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Miss Jacobs, what type of student are you looking for at the high school for international studies? Were these students that came there saying, I want to go to Slovenia, or were there just students <laughs> that were open to opportunities? How, how do you recruit and who should apply? Anybody should apply, absolutely anybody. And, um, and we actually have all kinds of students. Our students come from over 50 different schools, all, every, every middle school in HISD, as well as private schools, mm -hmm. other charter schools in the area, because um, they want an opportunity. Now, some parents choose our school because we're small, mm -hmm. only 400 students and parents like that. Some people choose us because we are an early college high school and that opportunity is phenomenal to get two years of free college. Mm -hmm. And others, come to us at 15 or 14 years old and they already know they want to learn Chinese or they really want to know more about the world and um, so we really take all kinds of students and our mission um, is to internationalize our HISD students. Mm -hmm. So we are really trying to be a slice of HISD, all of the diversity that HISD has to offer, take those students and internationalize them and get them a college degree before they <laughs> graduate. Wow. <laughs> well, we already know that you're probably going to go backpacking throughout Europe before you go to college <laughs> because you've seen that done. But is everyone here open to more international travel and ready to see the world on an even larger scale? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, good luck with it. You seem like a great group of students. I know I have two juniors and two seniors here. I wish you the best. I hope you have another great summer experience. And thanks so much for joining us yeah. and for representing District 4. I tell you, <laughs> we love having you as part of our community.